Um, I want to start with this little painting. Right, I don't know, can you see it? Um, it's a, uh, I bought it in a charity shop, a maquette, and I'm testing a new technique in uh, painting that I learned from Nick Bashel last year. And he's a great painter and he's got the very old techniques. There's four um, techniques that are hundreds of years old. They go back to Renaissance stuff. This is the stuff that Caravaggio is using. It's the stuff that Picasso is taking apart. Um, this is me trying, un trying to understand it. And I bought, because I couldn't get um, a model to sit uh, all the time and to practice like this, I bought a maquette from a charity shop. Now I've put this maquette in a particular position. Now I think that this position is the position of our time. And if you just point the camera that way slightly, Oh, you missed it. He was doing it, right? And it's the, it's the, this, right? So that's what, that's what he's doing. Looking at the phone. Yeah. Is he looking at the phone or is he doing some kind of strange religious penitent thing? I'm not sure. Um, hello. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful because it's called, and it's got like the, um, the marks from the technique, the, the guide marks in terms of establishing proportion. And I'm leaving them in to remind myself of how to do it and to remind myself that it's a learning moment painting. Um, and those marks have looked like strings next to the maquette. So it's obviously called puppet, um, which connects me to what are these objects? What is this thing that's being carried? Um, it's a way to navigate the world. Right now, how we navigate the world, it's not certain at the moment. We're in a place where it's not obvious how to navigate the world. And we're very much relying on uh, information we get through this, these devices because without them, it's quite a scary place. I'd like to take that thought to this other painting uh, around the corner. Um, I haven't done one of these for about uh, three years. It's the first one I've done for three years. And uh, it happened, basically I've been writing a lot. And um, as these ideas form in me, they unlock paintings, a bit like a computer game. It's like, as I, as I get to the end of uh, an understanding, a painting crops up as a, as a prize, and this one appeared very quickly, in like four days, um, which is the fastest I've ever done one of these paintings. Um, it's called polarity. Now, what is polarity? Polarity is when I'm in secure relationship, secure um, attached contact with another human, right? Or, or a god, or a smartphone. Right now, smartphones are designed to securely attach to us. We, we want to, this, this um, interface is so intuitive. Now, some human relationships are that intuitive, right? And that's when we feel like we're in love, or we feel like we are safe and part of a family. Um, this has all of those things in it. And uh, uh, there's, a, there's a lovely little clue as to why it's called polarity in the, an accident of paint in the buggy. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little yin-yang symbol there that I did not intentionally paint uh, that appeared. And, and that's the symbol, the ancient symbol of polarity. Uh, and it's even got the little eye in, in the, the spinning fish. Just while we're here, I'll, put, I'll talk about that one. Um, this painting took five years, don't get run over, there's a van. Um, bloody post. And uh, yeah, it's again, it's, it's right on the subject about outing the inn. So here we are inside, it's an interior, I very rarely do interiors. Um, it's a particular interior and it's the kitchen of a friend of mine 
um, that I've spent a lot of time in trying to work out. He's, he's one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. And we have fantastic bounce about the nature of not just magical realities, but also political realities. Um, and this is that. And I'll, I'll leave it at that, I think. Sam. Hi. You can come in and have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, just while we're outside, that one is called Mary's Garden and painted it in 2020. And it, uh, for some reason, it, it's still with us. I'm really surprised. I think it's one of the best paintings I've ever done. Um, it's got, it was the beginning of the hiding of a very obvious face in a painting. Like I suddenly realized that it's possible to put a completely blindingly obvious human face in a painting and no one sees it. It's like, whoa. Hang on, aren't we all about facial recognition? No, it turns out if you do that, it vanishes. Because we're not expecting people to float by us like that. Um, it's got seven Marys in it, right? And, and these are different layers of human experience. One of them is the Virgin Mary who only appeared in our consciousness when the devil was invented. Or rather, she, you know, obviously she's there in the in the story, but in terms of in the Middle Ages, we needed uh, the feminine. Um, and she came to occupy the position occupied previously by Isis, um, by Venus. And the balance to that is set, is Satan, is the, the, in the Middle Ages, the devil coming out. So this was done at a time when the devil began stalking our society. And uh, obviously you've got, you've got uh, silver bells and cockle shells. There's a song called uh, A Message to Mary by the Everly Brothers that I, I sing with my daughter and my friend Seth. And that's about being in prison. So it's like 2020. This is the painting of 2020. Um, obviously, Typhoid Mary, you know. I just, I, I, I might have talked about this uh, too much. Uh, can you see the queen there? Right, it's an interesting question because it's not the queen. It's a painting of the queen. It's not a painting of the Queen. It's a painting of a digital representation of the Queen that was presented as the real Queen um, in the Paddington Bear sketch. Now that's fascinating in and of itself, is that most people, when they see it, they go, I thought that was the real Queen. So it's, I don't, I'm not necessarily trying to sell this painting. It's a conversation piece. And it's a political, techno-political conversation piece. Um, this one, is, the, is one of the newest, and it's, uh, it's sort of concurrent with polarity out there. Um, again, you've got the face on the side, hidden thing, but this face is my face, and it's a portrait, a self-portrait I painted 11 years ago. Um, underneath uh, the street scene, the ghosts, I mean, there was a brilliant poet that came in earlier called Brendan, who, who called them ghosts. And he's right, we're haunted as we walk around the street by um, not just our own ghosts, but by the ghosts of industrial living. Um, I, this painting is called Cutting the Cord. It's very powerful for me right now because I'm realizing how easy it is to live um, according to someone else's rules because I keep honoring them, right? And, and I, I think in this setting, currently in our place in space and time, um, we need to cut the cord almost everywhere. Uh, uh, it, we, I don't think there's much that can, that can be trusted. And, and certainly as AI becomes more sophisticated, it's possible for it, if we allow our channels to be limited to the visual and the audio, it can pretty much mimic anything it wants. So 
it's almost essential to develop the habit of cutting the cord, right? Which is what this is about. Um, this is again a bit older, it's 2020. Uh, it's uh, a response, or, or rather it's um, inspired by uh, Dame Frida Harris, who uh, worked with Alistair Crowley to make a deck of tarot cards, which I first got, the Thoth deck, uh, in 2019. And they're amazing, the loudness. Um, this painting is called the Ten of Cups, which is about having had enough, <laughs> right? There you go. So end of 2019, beginning of 2020, that's your lot. Boof. We're now going to change the rules and you've got to start from scratch. Um, again, there's another one here like the, the puppet. It's the beginning of learning a new technique, these ancient so you can see there's a very classical style here. Um, but I'm sh again showing my marks and it, it, it's called old school. Onwards. Another one similar, um, but this time I had gone to see Cezanne. There was a Cezanne show at the Tate and I bought my first sable paintbrush, it cost me 60 pounds, right? And these, these are the first marks I made with it. And having seen, I took the brush to the Cezanne show, right? <laughs> and took the brush round the Cezanne show and came back and did this. And so it's got not just that classical sensibility, it's also, you know, I'm, I'm not nowhere near doing what he was doing, but I'm starting to look at what he was doing. Um, I, think it's, I think there's tons still to do in this area. Um. <laughs> this is nuts, right? It's probably my most nuts painting. Um, it's called Brighton Crucifixion. Uh, it's, it's four layers. Each layer, I turned it 90 degrees. So there are things coming through. The first layer has got a face, again, that's a, the eyes and nose are here. Um, there's a foot there left from it. Uh, there's a second layer street scene, and you've got, like, heads. Um, there's a third layer, which is one of the new smart buildings. So that the buildings that are... Um, devoid of architectural joy that are going up and they're massive and they all have the same kind of uh, technological infrastructure in, in that they are sensitive to metadata of the people that are living there so there's a secondary income stream as well as the rent which is why people it's why the money can afford to build these buildings um, and so the name Brighton Crucifixion isn't just about my own crucifixion living in Brighton, it's about the crucifixion of the town of Brighton, and these are the nails banging in. Um, and this, strangely, is what's left of it, that structure, pretty much, and it's, an e, it's a letter E, which, uh, we, given the festival context of the rest of the painting, is obviously about a drug state. And so, for me, this is that drug state moment uh, of like, whoa, everything's gone a bit mental. And this guy is, is he, he's like, get out of my face. And who can blame him? But he's also castrated by a, a cross that I didn't paint consciously. That was just part of what was there. Um, so this is about chemical castration. It's about social castration of the, um, the masculinity that's in crisis. The... I don't know. Uh, there's some sort of weird telepathic communication going on here with his mate, and I'm not sure what that's about. It's like he's in charge of him, or I don't know. That's, these are my suppositions. I'll leave the rest to you, I think. Um, this one, I love this painting. I love this painting. It's, um, 
again, I, I can't believe I've still got it. I, I would very much have expected this to have gone by now. It's called Release, and it's 2021, and it's that moment when we were first allowed back in shops, right? And so you, these are some of the first times people are going into a shop. Um, and from the layers underneath, there's some, something here about a dark presence living inside someone. And that is, chimes for me with the sense of, the underlying sense of dread I, I've been carrying since early 2020 about the urban setting. Or, or indeed, just about people in general and, and what, what, how they might behave next. Um, Cool. Onwards. <laughs> you can come in. Do you want to look? Sorry. Oh, this one's crazy. It's a self-portrait. Again, done first experiments with this technique. But I had to stop very early on in the process because a figure appeared. And, and I went, wow, that's a perfect... For me, it's a perfect figure that is uh, in the middle of a tennis serve or a like racquetball kind of servant. She, uh, she's, it's a woman and she's wearing a centurion's helmet. I don't know what that means, but that's what it is. I've called it Grace because it represents for me the personality of the acci seemingly accidental events that I'm, we're all beset with. <laughs> um, on to this, right. This is Between the Bars, right, which is a song by uh, Elliot Smith, who I supported when I was in a band many years ago, and he killed himself. And one of the songs he wrote um, is very much about this song, Between the Bars, is very much about the relationship with the self. So my, in my dark times, in, this was painted over about three years, from 2020 to, to now, I've just finished it. Um, but I, I titled it last year when I understood something about the song Between the Bars. And he's saying, I'll keep you safe from all those people out there, right? Come with me into alcoholism, into numbing, into escape. And this painting seems to be full of the kind of escaping so between the bars, right, in the song, the picture is of bars, and they're going, uh, kiss me again between the bars. But this is between the bars. You've been to a bar there, and you've been to a bar over here, right? And also, it's a musical notation thing. So where is, what, what, what are the notes between the bars? And th th for me, there's a, a kind of melody line to these figures. The notation though. Yeah. Um, and also, and... Well. Crazily, this young woman has got a pair of handcuffs dangling, right? So it's kind of, you know, many layers. Uh, this is probably one of the more controversial paintings. Uh, it's called The Crusade. And I, I've been on, I'm guilty of being on a crusade, uh, trying to, putting posters up, putting stickers up, trying to affect consciousness, noticing that people are very resistant. Um, this is a group of uh, Extinction Rebellion people putting up a poster and they've got his bucket and uh, he's staring at me. Um, and then the figure underneath is very much a, a Greta Thunberg. Um, what's the word? I don't know, martyr figure um, is what it is. This one is, it's called Keep Up. And uh, for me, the, the women in it are saying to the men in it, keep up. <laughs> and I think that's been true for decades, that the work women did about um, self-realization men just kind of hoped they'd stop. And while I've been doing the work of self-realization, I've noticed a lot of other men don't seem to have been doing it. 
Um, obviously, I've got more to do. We've all got more to do. Um, looking at sometimes how strong and how on it particularly women can be, and particularly my daughter, and uh, they're very inspiring. And I'm going, right, I want to keep up. I want to keep up and be on a level. I don't want to be playing catch up. I want to be at the same level. And uh, anything else? Again, the smartphone, he's not looking at it. She's looking at it. He, there's a sense of uh, sort of, I'll do as I'm told. <laughs> right, which I don't think is really good enough. That's not there's good enough for me anyway. Uh, continuity of your protest throughout the thread of this exhibition. I sure, I can't, I'm, yeah, I, I haven't got a voice. Uh, apart from in these paintings. So my dream is, has always been, can I paint something that, I, that nourishes me that someone else can have on their wall? Right, so I'm not just being angry, I'm actually courting beauty. I'm, I'm looking for what's beautiful about paint and about people and about, even about the urban setting, right? And, have we done this? We haven't done this no. yet. Okay. It kind of takes us on. Yeah, yeah. Um, except this is again from a festival, and but it, it, it does. The title of it is surplus enjoyment. Um, now, surplus enjoyment is a weird concept that I heard from a philosopher called Slavoj Žižek, and uh, he loves it. I love it. It's a. It, the principle is. Um, I don't know when to stop. I, I, I am not. I am going through the practice of something without realizing that the substance of it is. Sorry, the battery's about to die. I just want to make sure I got that recorded. Okay. It's still rolling. Um, about to die. All right. Well, uh, surplus enjoyment creates a. Sorry, just that again on reframe so we can come back in. Go there. A surplus enjoyment. Surplus enjoyment creates uh, the opportunity for a, a kind of excess. To, to what we need, right? So we, do, we get what we need and then we carry on doing it because we we don't realise we're satisfied. Uh, and what that does, um, it creates like things that are not part of a whole that have carried on living. So in this, there's a ghostly head that's floating um, that shouldn't be still alive and yet it's still part of the painting. And at the same time, what we see is these kids who are quite privileged, it's quite a, a you know, wealthy young people's festival. And they're sort of having a bit of a miserable time <laughs> and uh, sort of arguing with each other and going, Meh. I don't know, whatever it is, that first morning after the night before, and they're all like young and privileged and well-dressed, but not quite able to have the party they deserve because they're trapped in their expectations of it being a particular way. Awesome. Um, we've got that bottom one. Right, this is um, Baby Steps. Now again, it's, uh, it's part of the, the series of work about um, kind of re-parenting. So taking the, 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 the infant who has needed respect uh, and hasn't got it and doing it for myself and can carrying this infant around going, oh, no, we're going over here now. Uh, you like this? Yeah, good. And, and listening to myself in a way I haven't done that before. And in, um, there's a... There's, there's loads of things in this painting that point to why it's called Baby Steps, but to be honest, I can't quite face going into it now. Just have a look at it. Um, right, do you want to have a look at that one? Right, this is called Progress. 
Um, again, it's part of the series about uh, trying to pull myself up out of the, uh, the rock bottom place I've been in and make paintings again. And finding myself making paintings and as an extra, added extra, I found this as a canvas in the street um, and painted a, a figure over it. Now, I'm going to show you what it is underneath, if you want to see. It's, it's, uh, it's a steam train. And you've got some very proud, like, uh, steam train operating men. But that's invisible when we turn it like this, and there's something, again, that reminds me of... Uh, who did, who's the surrealist who did um, Ceci Nippa and Peep? Um, or anyway, he's done some work a bit like this. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's, yeah, it's called Progress. 